Let's look at the first tool, which is called ObjDump. This is installed on most Linux systems. If not, you can find it in the bin utils package. So let's move into the directory that holds our exercises. In this case, it's intro to reversing slash binaries. So CD into intro to reversing slash binaries, and then hit LS to see the files. Now, ObjDump is a program that dumps object files in various ways. The way we're going to use it is with a disassemble option. So let's go ahead and type in ovdump minus j dot text minus capital D exercise 01. Now exercise 01 is the binary we want to disassemble. And you can see that it dumps the object file. It's going to show us the assembly code that exists in this executable file. If you're wondering why I did this command line, minus j dot text, that tells us only to dump the text section. If you don't know what a section is, that's okay. We'll talk about that at some point, but it's not important right now. Just remember, objump minus j dot text. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's okay, but it's going to give you more data than we need. So use your mouse to scroll up, and you're going to find this function called main. Now main is a, what most programs on Linux call the main code the programmer wants to write and execute. Main itself is called a function. There are other functions besides main that get linked in from the C runtime that get the program started and help the program exit. Now, you'll see a few things in this display. On the left-hand column, this is the virtual address of the code, and you can see it's shortened. There's an obj dump entry to make it print the whole virtual address, but since all of these are, are leading zeros, it, it, the output by default just skips them. Then we can see here, this is the actual function that we're looking at. If your program had multiple functions, there'd be multiple of these sections with function names that we would want to look at. But then for each line, you see the actual instruction that the computer will execute with the virtual address of the instruction, the actual machine code that the computer actually understands and executes. And then on the right hand column, you see what is the actual assembly code that matches this code, this machine code. Again, the machine only knows the numbers, this 5-5. It knows that 5-5 is push RVP, whatever that is. This format that you see is called AT&T syntax, which is one way of, it's just a syntax specification for displaying this machine code in human readable format. I generally like to use something called Intel format, which is a little different. An object dump supports Intel format. To see obj dump, dump Intel format, all you have to do is, on your obj dump command, add the option to minus capital M Intel. And if you then scroll up to main, you will see it looks a little different. It still says push RBP, but you see the there's no um, percentage sign. And on things like moves, the actual ordering is different. And I just I find this easier to read, this format. But that's one way you can get this assembly output with the tools that are free in Linux. And actually, object dump is basically on any Unix system. Uh, I've never seen a Unix system that doesn't have object dump. Object dump. Now, I want to show you, before we talk about how to disassemble and what all this means, I want to show you another way of viewing the disassembly code. And it, this is a free site that provide you a GUI based disassembler and it has some really nice features that are similar to very expensive commercial disassemblers like if you ever heard of IDAPRO or Binary Ninja both excellent 
excellent tools, but kind of expensive. But the online disassembler is a nice free tool that you can use. So go to online disassembler.com and then you can click on the start disassembling. And this is your your display. You can see the disassembly here, which it just uses some example disassembly, is, is shown. And you have different views. You have a graph view, which shows you what's called the control flow graph. And each of these boxes is a base, what's called a basic block. Don't worry what that means yet. And you can see this is really uh, nice visually because you can actually see how the code flows and it's broken up to chunks. It has some other options here. It shows you the hex, the actual binary in hex. It shows the sections, if we have sections, and other information about the file. So let's go ahead and load up our example file in there. Let's click on File, Upload File. Choose the path to the, the Exercise 1 program. Click OK. And this gives you some options. If different architectures and, and, and depending on the data, the binary you're disassembling, you may have to set some of these features yourself. But with most programs that are straight, you know, Windows programs or Linux programs, you don't need to worry about this. But we will eventually come back to this at some point. But don't worry about this for now. Just click OK because it's going to choose the defaults that are good. Okay. And then you can see here you have a lot of information available to you. Let's go ahead and make it a little larger. On the left you have what's called symbols. These are names of useful parts of the program. They might be functions, they might be names of variables. Okay, these are symbols. And this is very useful. You can click on a symbol, for example, main and the disassembly will jump to that. Okay, So let's move over to the disassembly window. So you can see here, this is very nice, this breaks down the disassembly into basic blocks, Okay, which again don't worry about, and it shows you a little flowchart. You can see how the code flows from this line to this line under certain conditions, it's called the jump not equal. And, and and you can see again the uh, section here, text section, the virtual address, again, just like an object dump, you can see the machine code and then the human readable code. And you'll notice this is 18T format. We can click on the graph, and this is really nice. You see a graph. This is the CFG, or the control flow graph, of the function. And you can see this is how the code goes. It goes sequentially up until you hit this last line, and then a decision is made. Do you go to red or you do you go to green and this gives you a flow you could so you can see visually and I really like these um, the graphing features Ida has it binary ninja has it and online assembler has it the object dump does not have this which is one reason why this online assembler is nice if we click over here to hex you can actually see this is the the code okay of the binary and you can click on, so this is just the hex code. I do not believe you can edit it. No, you cannot edit it, but you can view the code. If you click on sections, you will see all the sections in the file. And don't worry, we don't know what a section is yet. Well, unless you do know, but I don't expect you to know what a section is yet. Just remember, we're looking at the text, because that's where all the executable code goes. You would think text sounds like something that you would write, like, it wouldn't be executable code, but it actually is executable code. And then we have the file information, which has information about the file itself. The name, the format, the object format, some of the attributes of that, that file, the size of the file, an MD5 checksum, and a SHA-1 checksum. And then it, it, apparently it's got some checks for malware in here. Okay. So that's just our quick introduction to getting the disassembly with ObjDump and also this online disassembler, which again is a really nice tool. It has a lot of nice features. One of the other features here is strings. As we reverse engineer things, we're going to 
find that strings, data embedded in the file that is human readable, that is not code, often gives us a lot of hints to what the actual code is doing, like comments or error messages. We can search for patterns in, in the file, and we can actually define structures. We're not going to talk about structures yet. But this is really nice online disassembler. It gives you a lot of features. All right, that's all for today. Check back us on, with, on, with us on our next episode. If your organization requires serious security training, we provide in-house and off-site classes. Check out our website, www.pelletinggrp.com.